So here's a well that if you'd only seen this surface card, you'd say, well, are you coming into fluid here, here? What's going on? As you can see, we've got quite a bit of incomplete fillage. It should have been coming down here in the downhole card. This well's nice and full. On the surface card, you look at where is it really entering fluid, but when you see the downhole card, it makes it very easy to understand that pump is full. Here's a fiberglass rod string. So we're getting over travel. The card's leaning down to the right. Uh, you can see it's getting about 240 inch a pump stroke versus what you're getting at the surface. These are very important when you work with the fiberglass rods to work with the companies to make sure you're setting your pumps right because you're going to get that much over travel. You don't want to be tagging that much rod on the bottom, especially with fiberglass rods. They do not like compression. They like stretching, but they don't like compression. This is a rod string pump size, same speed, with three different geometry pumping units. So you can see the surface cards, they just look slightly different with what the geometry is doing. But when you look at a downhole card, the card's easy to determine. So the reason some of this is going on is that we don't seem to have the time anymore to educate everybody on all the different types of surface cards. And I like to think the surface card is like a fingerprint. And when we're optimizing a well, it's just like going to the doctor now and looking at an EKG. That's what a dynamometer is, and that's what Lynn will be talking about later. That getting that kind of data allows us to truly look at what's going on with this complete pumping system to determine what we need to do. And there's a card shapes run around that you can look at. There's 12 basic downhole card shapes that will show you if the tubing's moving, is it fluid pound, if the traveling valve's leaking, standing valve's leaking. What gets fun, though, is when you have multiple problems on one well, and you get to look at that. Uh, but there's software out there that's uh, there to help you look and try to help you analyze some of these situations. Well, a standard rod pump controller is always used runtime. That's our most critical factor. How long are we running today? Did we run longer? Well, if we ran longer, we should have made more fluid. If we didn't, pump's probably slipping. Something's happening. So that's the key number we want to look at on a controller. But the newer controllers also allow us to look at the valve checks. We can stop the well and see if the pump's leaking. And it's also acting as a production meter, and I'll show you that here in a minute, a well test. These are all smart controllers, so they store the dynamometer cards. So what did the well look like when it started, and what did it look like when it shut down? So now you don't have to sit out there at the well and watch this data. You can quickly set it up, leave, come back and look at it again later. We talked about how long do you leave the well down with a time clock. You've got to do the same thing with a pump-off controller. How long do we leave it down? The newer controllers have mechanisms in them that will run through basically like a buildup curve for you and help you gather the data to determine what that downtime should be. That could take you all day if you're not careful on some wells. So this is a nice little tool to save you time. Rodometer and pumpometer, uh, we did that just to pick on Russell Stevens. Where's he at? You know. uh, that's just an odometer that we put in so that you can actually look at that rod string or pump. How many strokes has it made? and you can reset it when you put a new string in. Uh, we've also been looking at all of the stuff we're doing with cold bed methane. And what we're finding is we've got a great product to move fluid. But what do you do about gas? Well, we have found on these little cold bed wells, in our downtime, maybe 15 minutes was a good downtime. And then all of a sudden, on one cycle, at eight minutes of downtime, we had enough back pressure that we killed the gas flow. Well, we're pumping water. They could care less about the water. Where's the revenue? The gas. So we've added features that you can actually look at your gas flow. So if the gas flow falls off while you're in your downtime, it'll kick the well back on. Let's get that fluid off and let the gas start flowing again. Paraffin and scale. If you look at a card, the bigger it gets, the more work we're doing. So when you first start off, the controllers will tell you, typically they calculate the inside of the card as your polished rod horsepower. And we will look at that. If that starts to grow, we're doing more work. Could be friction, could be scale, could be paraffin. These are ways that you can try to look at what's going on so you just don't automatically hot oil every two weeks. You can actually hot oil when you need it. Uh, RTU functions, a lot of the new controllers have extra inputs and outputs. Digital and analog. Digital, just on off. 
Analog is a stream of data. So maybe you would like to look at flow line pressure. Maybe you want to look if your stuffing box is leaking. Uh, you could look at a vibration switch, temperature. Maybe it's close to a uh, residence. You've got a fence around it. And you want to hook up a sensor on the gate to see if someone's opened it. All of these things now can be connected to these boxes and they can be alarmed so that you can actually shut the wells in and stop things. So it's all built around safety. One of the things that surprises me, a lot of the controllers now have an option that you can put a safety alert, an irritating beeper. Like you hear the tractors when they back up, beep, beep, beep. Well, the controllers can do that too, that they will beep before they start. And I think less than 1% of the units we sell, people take that. And it's not very expensive. It amazes me that they don't do that more. One of the things that came out a few years ago, and early Shell had sort of promoted all this to us, is that most of us all were all well weighers. We used to just run dynamometers where this all started. And back then, you'd show up at a well, and maybe they told you what it made, maybe they didn't. So the first thing we would do is grab a dynamometer card. We knew their pump size. We knew, now we see their strokes per minute. We know their stroke length. We can sort of estimate what this unit should be making per day. Well, with the rod pump controllers we had in those days, we said, well, let's try to figure out what that pump stroke is. So we drew a line wherever our set point was, which we typically like to put near our standing valve weight, which is the weight of the rods and the fluid. And any time that card crossed that line, we drew a point down here, and we called that our so-called pump stroke. We knew it wasn't correct, but it was close. So we gave you a K factor, like all good meter companies do, so you can calibrate it. Well, now that we have the downhole card, we can see what the real pump stroke is. So every stroke, the controller looks at what is the pump stroke, so we know how much fluid we moved, and we can show you daily how much production that well is making. It lets you put in a water cut as well. So how often do you normally get a well test? Once a month? Once every few weeks? Is it a six-hour test? Twelve-hour test? What's going on? This way, 24 hours a day, you can see what's happening. Now we've added some new features lately that we're actually taking this downhole card and showing you how much shrinkage, gas, and leakage it's in there. We allow you to do a valve check so you can see how much it's leaking, and we are doing some PIP calculations in there as well that you can go to another level to even get it even more accurate. What's pretty neat about this is we've gotten it approved at a couple areas in Canada that they're able to use this as a well test in a field that they've got one main test, and then they allocate it by the controllers to each well. We've gotten this certified in Russia as a true well test. So we're trying to work with the Railroad Commission here to see if we can do the same thing to try to save money on the well test facilities. On the gas side, uh, we're seeing more and more beam pumps being used on deliquefaction and just moving that fluid. So a lot of the controllers now are actually doing gas calculations where before you may have had an EFM, an electronic flow measurement device, doing your gas calculation and a rod pump controller. Some of the new controllers can do all that in one, to have one box to try to save you money. Uh, this is also showing here just a little wireless unit because normally where the guys have plumbed in the gas measurement isn't very convenient to the back of the pumping unit. And you might have to run a lot of wire over to that transmitter. So you can put a little wireless transmitter on that to bring that over. 